Hello, and thank you very much for tuning in to Dr. Siddhika Chiu. In this video, we will talk about a very interesting yet challenging topic in pharmaceutics, that is dosage form design. By the end of this video, you will know what dosage forms are, why do we need dosage forms, and what is needed to design dosage forms. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, a dosage form is a physical form by which the drug substances are delivered to the areas where they have to exert their action or the sites of action within the body. There are so many dosage forms out there. Some of the common ones are tablets, capsules, solutions, injections, inhalers, and you might know some others. But generally, dosage forms can be categorized according to different criteria. If we take the physical form, we can find solid dosage forms like tablets, liquid dosage forms like solutions, semi-solids like creams, and gaseous dosage forms like aerosols. We can also classify the dosage forms according to the route of administration into five main classes which are oral dosage forms that are taken through the mouth, topically applied dosage forms onto the skin and mucous membranes, inhalational dosage forms is the third one and they include anything instilled through the nasal and pulmonary route of administration. There are also dosage foams that are installed to various body cavities, like the rectum or vagina. And finally, we have the parenterally applied dosage foams through the skin to various areas. But why do we need all these dosage foams? Well, for many reasons. One is Dosage foams can provide an accurate unit doses like the 500 mg of paracetamol tablet or the 100 mg of aspirin. They also resemble a means to deliver the drug to the patient in a very convenient way as they can enable masking unpleasant tastes and odors. Also, they can aid in placing the drug to the exact targeted area, such as what eye and ear drops do. We can also manipulate the dosage foam in a certain way to reduce the frequency of dosing for the patient convenience, which is feasible with a sustained and prolonged release delivery. Some dosage foams might be selected because they provide protection for the drug substance from the different environmental and biological hazards that may affect them in a negative way. And of course, for many reasons, dosage foams may enhance the therapeutic activity of drug substances by many means, which will be very obvious in some of our future discussions. Okay, now we know the headlines about the different dosage forms. What about their design? In general, what is done when designing a dosage form for a new drug substance lies under two broad titles. The first is a pre-formulation and this includes all the investigation performed on the drug substance to know its various properties. And as the dosage foam includes the drug and other additives or excipients, 
serving various functions, then the exhibients are also studied alone and with the drug to know their compatibility together or whether they come along with each other or not. The other thing done in dosage form design is the stability studies and this covers all the studies done on the drug substance and the proposed formulations to know to which extent and for how long they would retain their original attributes under different conditions. Pre-formulation and stability studies encompass lots of information and that what is going to be discussed in the dosage form design series. For now, this video comes to an end. Thank you very much for watching. Here is the recap of what has been said. Don't forget to share your comments down below and continue learning through Dr. Sutika Stay fabulous wherever you are.